Okay, what's happening people? Jono here and I'm super excited because I'm just about to do a podcast with a very special guest. Now, if you're new to the group and you, you don't know, I, I host a podcast and I also stream the podcast live straight into Facebook because I know not everyone is an Apple person, not everyone listens to, to podcasts. So I want to give everyone in here the opportunity to also experience the podcast as well. Uh, I'll introduce my guest formally when we start the podcast, but a uh, little just rough overview of him. He essentially helps people set up their membership sites or online courses on their own website, as opposed to like a Teachable or a Thinkific or, or something like that. We'll obviously um, talk about it more in a sec, but uh, if you're watching this video, usual deal, just hit the like button and just comment below and say, hello, Matt, or hello, Matthew, because he's he's giving up his time. And let me introduce the guy. This is Mr. Matthew Berry. Matthew, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks, to have, thanks for having me on here, Jono. No, I'm excited. Uh, we'll get started in the podcast in just a sec, Matthew. I like to to ask the community a question before we get started. I always offer the, the guests the opportunity to do the same. Is there any question you would like to ask this community? Yeah, that sounds great. Um, I think, yeah, I have a question for the community. Are any of you using LearnDash or have you ever looked at using LearnDash? Okay, so... I'll, I'll repeat that one there. If you've if if you're currently using Learn Dash, comment below and say yes. I'm currently learning Learn Dash. I'm currently using Learn Dash. If you've if you've heard about it, say I've heard about Learn Dash. And if you have no idea what Learn Dash is, comment below and and say no idea because it's in this group. It's one that doesn't always come up. But um, yeah, we're going to start the podcast. If you're watching the video, hit like, comment below, and say hello to Matthew. And if you've got any questions throughout the podcast. Just comment them below and either me or Matthew will get over to them later. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Course Creator Community Podcast, the, the place where course creators go to sell more of their online courses. I'm super excited because we have a very special guest uh, this week, all the way from Utah. I think Utah. Is it Utah? Oh, dear. Or did you I just, get that completely you, wrong? You, you just offended me, John. <laughs> Colorado. Where is it? Colorado? Idaho. 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 Man, I just, so many cities over there in the, the U.S. I just completely butchered it. But he's <laughs> that's from, not a city. It's a state, brother. Uh, is Idaho a state? Yeah, that's a, it's oh, a state. Oh, wow. Man, they got so many. We got like six states in Australia. You know, easy <laughs> hey. to remember. You guys have a whole heap of them. But anyways, about this guy. He helps course creators and coaches work more efficiently and save time with custom-built membership sites. He is a former digital marketing strategist. He's the current owner and founder of Embark Media. Without further ado, let me introduce the one and only Mr. Matthew Berry. Matthew, how hey. are you? Hey, John. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I'm stoked to be here. I'm good. You're probably doing better before I offended you with the, the Utah and Colorado <laughs> jokes, right? Hey, it's all good. I went to Utah State <laughs> University, so, uh, you know, we are in a neighboring state, so it's all good. Awesome. Lucky I didn't say LA. I can see it on your, your cap there. Hey, I, you know, I am repping the Dodgers right now. For <laughs> any of you watching the video, go Dodgers. Dodgers. Now that's a football team, I'm guessing. Because That been... is a major league baseball <laughs> team. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I've, heard, I've heard that. Hey, um, Matt, I like to start all my podcasts off with a quote or mantra that inspires you or fires you up. Have you got I, one for us? I do, John. I do. I, in fact, it's one that I, I love very much. It's It actually comes from... Uh, someone that I follow in American football in the National Football League, uh, someone that I look up to, and 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 uh, you know, he's he's got a great work ethic. The quote is, it's in Latin, and it's the only Latin I know. <laughs> Nunc chepi, Nunc chepi means now I begin. Okay, and the reason that I like that is because every day we begin again every day, you know, we have successes, we have failures, we have stumbling blocks, we have issues that come up in our life. If we can just remember that now I begin, you have to reset. Sometimes you have to, you have to, you know, make changes. Hold on one sec. You have to adapt, right. And make pivots in your life. And so Philip rivers, this is his quote, Nunc Chepi, and I've taken it on as, my, as myself too, as one of my favorites. Yes, love that one myself. There's a, a similar quote that I like, I've, or, or 
it's even more a meme, I guess. It's on Facebook, Instagram, all over the place. It comes up where it's like, you know, hey, if you add something where it's, it's you know, millions of, of dollars in your bank account and it reset every single day, you know, what would you do with it? And everyone's like, well, I'd spend it for sure. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's similar like that in life, right? You get that amount of seconds or whatever it may be. You know, you get that amount of seconds. So mm. use it in that day because the next day it's starting again. So That's I, right. I love that myself there. Now, Matthew, do you want to tell us just a, in a minute or two, what is it you actually do? I, I gave you a bit of an intro. I know what it is you do. But for our listeners out there, do you want to give them an overview in a minute or two? What is it you do? Yeah, and you nailed it, you know, on the intro. I, I do help course creators and coaches um, with custom membership sites. And the way that works, just like you said, is, you know, hosting on their own site, their own, you know, domain that they own, their own, you know, ecosphere. And instead of going to a, a third-party platform, that is to say third-party platforms work for lots of people. And I'm not here to, uh, you know, uh, come down on any, any of that, you know, you like, you, you use what fits you. And so I serve those people that are looking for that type of customization and ownership where they want to host it on their own website. Yes. And just so I can get my head around what it is you do there, Matt, you do the tech side, right? So they're like, Hey, here's my videos and what I want to put into it. Can you put it on my website and put it in these units and these columns and these modules? Is that right? What you do? Yeah, that's, that's a, a good overview of what I do for sure. I mean, I'm definitely a tech minded, uh, graduated with a degree in information systems. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> if you look back, as I think back to how I got originally involved in tech, I would say it would probably be the movie um, war games with Matthew Broderick, right? No, you never seen it. Never seen yes. it. John. I'm not All a right. tech guy. All right. <laughs> well, it was a popular movie in the eighties. Right. But uh, you know, I started building uh, tiny little software games when I was a kid. I was in Computer 4-H, which is like a, a program, uh, you know, they have Horse 4-H and stuff like that. So Computer 4-H is kind of like an outlier. So I've always been kind of involved in tech. But on, on top of that also is I help those people organize and uh, build the course material, you know, and give them advice and coach them on how best to deliver that with their custom membership site. Yes, love that. All right, well, what I wanted to chat about today, Matt, if it's okay with you, is we, if we maybe split it in two parts, let's spend the first, the next sort of 10, 15 minutes or so talking about a third-party LMSs, you know, the Teachables, the Thinkifix, that sort of stuff, versus hosting it on your own website, some of the advantages, disadvantages. So we'll spend you know, 10 or so minutes talking about that. And then we'll move on to that second part that you mentioned there where, right, someone's going to go and host it, whether it's on a third party or in their own platform. What can we do to make sure that the users are getting the best experience? Is that cool with you? That sounds great. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, if, if you are looking, if you don't have a membership site or a course right now, go out and join some, right? Look, most of these people that I'm sure that are listening to this podcast have one. Um, or are thinking about building one, uh, the best way for you to see how they all work is to just actually go out and join some courses, find some people that kind of speak to you, speak to what you do, that have some kind of, you know, that you feel a connection to and just purchase their product and look at how they are delivering it. Look how they are serving their, uh, you know, their audience, their human, their avatar. And, you know, look at how they do that and look at some of the maybe some of the things that you 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 may not like some of the things that you really do like uh you know as far as third-party platforms uh i am a, i'm a member of a, a bunch of different uh memberships and courses that use third-party platforms and and they work fine you know and those people have been using it for a long time and they're very very successful people and uh then i also see people that have the you know the third-party option people that have some at some point felt a pain point where they want to move. But I think with any membership site or course, depending on or irrespective of the platform, there's basic, uh, you know, structural uh, strategies that you need to use independent of any platform that, that you're going to go with. Awesome. Love it. All right. Well, let's start. 
let's start with a bit of a battle and we not not too much of a battle we're not going to hurt the other other team but just run me through what are the actually let's start with the the mm, let's just say the advantages in general so let's say someone on here they're on a third party they're on a teachable they're on a think if kajabi new zenla whatever it may be what are some of the the disadvantages of hosting your course on that as opposed to if you are hosting it on your own website someone's listening to this and they're like well look matt why would i do it i'm on right. teachable it's it's on there you know why would i possibly want to go and get it on my website what are some of the advantages the advantages of a of a self-hosted over a yes, third party yeah 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 so uh one of my very first clients uh one of the very first people that I worked with on a site like this, they, they were using two different third-party platforms uh, for their course material. Um, one just didn't work very well. It was just wonky. The other one, they got notified that they had uh, 60 days, I believe it was, to move off of that platform because they were changing the terms of service and they were only going to serve nonprofit organizations. So this put this organization into a, you know, you know, a really bad place because their material was on this third party platform and they didn't have, you know, they were going to shut them off. So that can be a disadvantage because in essence, you are renting a space on their platform and you can be subject to their terms and those can change. Uh, and so the advantage of, you know, doing it on your own WordPress site. Most of us have a WordPress site. Most of us have, I mean, if you have a site, it's probably on WordPress. There's a few others, but it's most likely going to be WordPress. So an advantage to moving on to, you know, you can leverage the platform that you already have, which is WordPress and take advantage of the benefits of a WordPress platform. Uh, maybe a disadvantage of going a third, or a third party route. Maybe you're just starting out. Maybe you're just trying to get a minimum viable product out. You know, you have, don't have experience with WordPress. You don't have experience with some of the other um, tools that you may need. You're not as techie. You know, going with a third-party platform might make the most sense for you. It just depends on where you are in your journey with your membership, with your courses, and, and how you want to proceed. Yes, love that. And I'll give a bit of a, a summary there. Like, if you're just starting off, it's your first course, maybe a big jump to go on WordPress and get it on your website and download these plugins and, and all that sort of stuff there. It may be easier. I think Thinkific still has a free plan these days, you know, jump on Th Thinkific and fiddle around with it, see where it works. Okay. I can't, this all works here. It's enough to get me started. All right. Now I've got a few people down here. Now I'd prefer to, to get people to my website. Hey, let me go on my website. And let me transfer this over here. I think that's in a nutshell what you're saying there, right, Matt? Yeah. I believe that that's, I believe that that's, that's correct. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, well, let's delve into some of those benefits. You mentioned you were like, you know, if you're hosted on your website, you get some of the benefits of having it on a WordPress based membership. What are some of those benefits? Uh, you're going to get some of the benefits from uh, search engine optimization. Mm. You're going to get benefits of a higher level of customization. Yeah. Uh, you're going to get benefits of, you know, WordPress isn't going to come to come to you and say, uh, we're shutting you down because you're not, you know, you haven't met or meet our terms of service. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, those are a few of the benefits. I, you know, I've been involved in, and I've only ever had a couple of jobs that where I wasn't my own boss. And so I, I do sort of have that entrepreneurial spirit built into me for generations. And just from my perspective, I like owning as much of what I'm using as possible. So for me, that's, you know, and I've been using WordPress for 15 years or more. I don't even know, but uh, you know, I built my first website in the nineties for crying out loud. So, <laughs> uh, you know, so those are the benefits for me for WordPress. Awesome. Well, let's, let's even expand on a little bit of those. Cause I'm sure some of the listeners are like, man, I didn't, didn't even understand what any of those words meant. So let's <laughs> I, I always go to the tech part, part. So you can always reel me back in, Jono. Got it. Well, let's start with customization. So I know exactly what that means. But if you want to explain to, to the listeners, all right, right, um, if you've got it on Teachable or you've got it on WordPress, it's going to be more, you're going to have more customization or more freedom or whatever it is on, on WordPress. What, what does that actually mean? 
Well, so if you're looking at customization, um, the way that I kind of like to look at it is if you have, and this is to say nothing against third-party platforms, right? I'm, I use them from other people and they love them and they work. But if you're looking at a customization uh, aspect of it, it's almost like if you have all these different platforms that you are using to deliver and build and serve and and share, it, it almost becomes like this Frankenstein system depending on how you put it together, right? So if you can move that all into one system, you know, you've got, uh, it's just a little bit more together. You've got more brand control of your brand management. You've got control over, you know, everything. If you, if you want with WordPress, you can go down to the, it, it's, uh, you know, if you go to a Kajabi site, you almost know every Kajabi site when you go to a Kajabi site, you know, they all look the same. If you want to take a next level step with a, with a self-hosted platform, uh, for example, LearnDash, you can customize that and take it to a complete, almost nearly one-off look so that it it's completely different than anything else out there. There's going to be a few things that are just transferred over because of the structure that's built within that. But that said, you can take it and just kind of go crazy with it. If you wanted to, you could make, you know, you could make it look like Udemy or Skillshare if you wanted. Anything that you want is possible once you move into that other space of self-hosted. Yes, and I'll even I'll even simplify even more uh, for that. It's like you know you jump on any of these third-party platforms, whatever it may be. There's say you're a user, right? There's only mm -hmm. so much you can do. You know, I use um, Usenla at the moment. There's only you know so much colors I can have. Only so many um, places I can have the menu. Only so many things that it looks like there, and it's great. Not not rubbishing that. However, if I was on a WordPress, I could literally have whatever I want. I could have a hippopotamus up the top. I could have any <laughs> color I want down here. I can have the modules on the right-hand side and not on the left-hand side. And I can have the video bigger than this or, or smaller than this. So that's the way I look at it, where you can essentially do anything on the WordPress side of things. You're a bit more limited on a, on a third-party side of things. Now, you mentioned SEO, Matt. So most people watching this, listening to this, they'll probably know what SEO is. Where does that come into play? Like why, um, why is, is, are you saying hosting our course on there is going to give us better SEO or, or what does that mean? I believe that you're going to have more control over uh, your SEO, your search engine optimization choices on a WordPress platform than you are on a third-party platform mm. uh, just because uh you've got tools that you can use within, you know, your self-hosted that are tailored specifically for search engine optimization. And there are many third-party platforms that don't have that built in that are going to help you uh, get that. I mean, certainly if you are uh, SEO savvy, I'm sure that you're still going to be able to take advantage of some of that, but may not be to the level that you can if you're on a WordPress site. Awesome. And then I'll even simplify that even more. So essentially what we're saying there, let's say you've got a, uh, I'm just going to use Zenla because I use it. So that way we can't say we're, we're rubbishing anyone. If I've got a, a new Zenla school, it's going to be pretty freaking hard for someone to Google that and find me if I'm using new Zenla, right? To sell my, my course on. However, if I've got a WordPress website, it's going to be easier for people to Google me and find me because WordPress is just easier to set up for SEO. Would that be it in, in a nutshell? I think that's it. Yeah. You're looking at, you know, organic search and the ease of showing up in organic search, I think is easier with a WordPress uh, site. Awesome. Cool. And then the other thing you mentioned was essentially the, the changing of the rules where it's like, you know, we can jump on any third party platform where they might say, Hey, you can no longer say this sort of stuff here, or you can, you know, you now have to do this or you can't do PDFs or videos you can only come from this platform or whatever it may be you're going to have more freedom if you're hosting it yourself. Yeah. I mean, you look at Facebook. I mean, we're all using Facebook, right? And mm. uh, love it or hate it, they do have controls, right? And if any of you have run Facebook ads, <laughs> chances are you've probably got shut down at some point uh, just because you're using their platform and you have to obey to their rules. And the same applies with anything else. The likelihood that it's going to happen is probably small, but still, you you know, if, if, if it's not on your own platform, you do have to play by the rules that are set there. Uh, you know, the fees that they have set up with any kinds of transactions, 
uh, things like that. Yes, I heard a good, I saw a good uh, post the other day was like, um, if you think you own a Facebook account, you don't. Facebook <laughs> owns you or Facebook yeah. owns you or your account. And I'm like, <laughs> that's it's exactly. pretty, good, it's pretty good way to put it. Um, right. All right, cool. So we've spoken about some of the advantages, some limitations. Now, someone's watching this, Matthew, and they're like, all right, right. You know, you've, you've sort of sold me, Matt. I might uh, have a look into some of these, have a look into self-hosting it myself. You've touched on the, this this thing called Loan Dash a couple of times. What, what can you tell us about Loan Dash, Matthew? Is that like a Teachable or a Thinkific or what's Loan Dash? What can you tell us there? Absolutely, Loan Dash is an LMS. It's a learning management system, and a lot of these third party platforms are in essence an LMS. You know, Teachable, Thinkific. At the core, they're an LMS, and then you can sort of kind of tweak them to be a membership site if you want. Uh, and there's, you know, there's ways to do that, but uh, an LMS is usually built just for that, for delivering course material and, and, and building uh, courses. Uh, Learn Dash is an LMS, just like Thinkific, Teachable, uh, you know, New Zendler, Kajabi. However, it's hosted or it's, it is a WordPress plugin. You know, it's not, it's, that's the difference. Awesome. Okay. So let's say for example, someone wants to host a, their, their membership or online course on their website, they would need to purchase. Is it a purchase thing, Learn Dash? They purchase it? Yeah, I think it's, I think Learn Dash for their most popular uh, annual fee, I think it's $154 a year. Okay. You know, so if you look at that compare, compared to, uh, you know, maybe a monthly fee for say Kajabi, which is quite expensive. It's probably about uh, that a month yeah or more so you know you have to look at that but that said you can't r run learn dash without wordpress which means that you're going to have to have a hosting provider and you know i i recommend going with the most that the most premier uh wordpress host that you can get because there's a lot of there's a lot of junk out there uh <laughs> as far as hosting and if you go with a, a cheaper budget host it's going to give you a lot more headaches headaches and i think that that could be one of the problems that people have with wordpress itself is that they've used uh, a lower quality host that causes issues yes okay makes sense so and then from there matt is this is loan dash something people can do themselves or is that why people like you exist what can you tell us there about uh, learn dash and wordpress and putting your own courses together or membership sites together Oh, I mean, anybody, you know, people can use it, especially if you've, you know, if you've got a WordPress site and you're used to using WordPress, you're probably not going to have that much trouble with Learn Dash. Uh, I do offer done for you programs, but I also offer done with you where I just help people. And uh, I had a, a customer this, this year, uh, he's a, a Broadway vocal coach and he you know, he's not a tech guy. He's a broad, you know, he helps people sing better. <laughs> and he built his Learn Dash site with, with, with a little help from me. And, you know, he, he, it, he just built it all on his WordPress site, asked me a few questions and he got it done. So yeah, it's totally completely possible if you're familiar with WordPress to use a, a, a you know, a tool like Learn Dash. Awesome. All right. And then where do you sort of come in there, Matt? So you help people optimize it and make it better. Is that right? Yeah, I, you know, for in, in that example, yeah, I just kind of helped him and made it better. Uh, you know, a little tweaking with maybe some design stuff that was a little wonky from what he had and just made it a little better. Gave him some ideas of how to uh, present it and, you know, helped with some of the design stuff and, you know, pointed him in the direction of a good host to try and use that that would fit his budget. And, and you know, he, he went from there, he ran with it. He launched it with uh in conjunction with a, a book that he published you know and he did great it's great it's, it's working really well for him he's serving his community that purchased his book and he's giving away these courses for free uh in conjunction with his book purchase cool man well on that note what could you tell us matt in terms of maybe like common mistakes if you could maybe give or not mistakes but common things that uh you find you end up improving you know if there's like one or two things where you jump on a membership site and you're like, all right, right. I, there's nine out of 10 time people are going to have this. And if I can do this and this, it'll make it better. If you could give us maybe one of two tips for, for membership sites and also online courses as well, 
if we can tailor it generic, so whether it's your own Learn Dash or a Thinkific of a Teachable, that would be great. Uh, but if not, totally cool. Let us know what you got. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, the, the number one thing that I see, and I, I, I am like this as well, um, just because I like, you know, we, they have the shiny object syndrome. I mean, and, and uh, I'm definitely like an early tech adopter, you know, it's like, Ooh, something's coming out. I'm going to get it. And I've certainly uh, fallen prey to, Oh, this is a new tool. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. And then I'm just going to dive in and I'm going to start doing all this stuff. I think one of the core things that uh, a mistake that people make with either courses or memberships is not taking the time beforehand to structure out your material. And I, I've done this myself. Uh, if you if you take the time to build out, let's say your courses, your modules and your lessons and your quizzes, for example, and you build those out and you structure them and you build some categories that are common and you can use throughout your platform you know it's platform independent but if you can structure that content out and put it into those categories that helps you and it's going to help your users consume the content and it's going to help you to deliver the content yes love it so planning beforehand right from the uh, the overview in where it's like hey here's what the whole course looks like great here are my modules great here are my lessons here are my um, quizzes or, or my action tasks. Great. Let me plan that outside in and it makes it easier for everyone. Yeah, I think so. You know, as, as entrepreneurs, as many, I'm sure that are listening here, you know, it's oftentimes we'll jump out of the, you know, we're going to go skydive and we're going to jump out of the plane first. Mm -hmm. and then after we're going to go, where's the parachute, you know, cause we just want to dive in. But you know, if, if you can take a step back just a little bit and, and plan and schedule and structure, you're going to save yourself a lot of time. And like I said earlier, go out and purchase some courses, go out and join some membership sites and see how they're delivering the stuff, see what you like and see what they're doing well. You know, I'm, I'm in some that it's like, man, I can't find this material. I know you showed it to me once, but now I can't find it anymore. Or, you know, now this part is in Google drive. This part's in somewhere here. This one's going to get emailed to me. If you can streamline that stuff and keep it, more you know centralized and and organized that makes it the easiest for those that are taking your courses or you know trying to learn from you just make it as simple as possible to get from a to z for all of them in in all aspects of the site yes. and, the, and the course love that and i think there's two really good points there number one is the user right let's make it as best as possible for the user experience and the best way to find that out is by doing someone else's course because what i've found myself is that sometimes I'll create a course and I'm like, yep, it's so easy to navigate. You know, it's exactly where it is. And then I'll start, I'll get a question. Oh, hey, where's, where's this here? And I'm like, ah, oh, this person's an idiot. It says in the intro, it's, it's right there. <laughs> but then someone else asked that same question. And I'm like, man, what's wrong with people? But then I start to realize, hold on, if there's multiple people asking this question, maybe it's not something wrong with the people. <laughs> maybe it's something wrong with the person that, that created yeah. it. And, and the reason being, because I know this, like it's as a creator, it's easy for us to look from the outside and we know exactly where everything is, but there's a different experience if you didn't create the freaking course, right? Mm -hmm. And and sometimes it can be hard for us to think like that. We know exactly where everything is because we created it, but it can be hard to get in the, the user's shoes. And the best way is to do someone else's course because you might go through and like, oh man, this is so inconvenient. Hold on. This is exactly what I'm doing in my course. Here, you know? <laughs> what can I do? Or, or the other way, you know, man, this is so smooth. How can I put this back to my course and make it smooth? Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's so true. And I would even go even a step further is if you don't have a coach right now, find yourself a coach, any kind of someone that you trust, some kind of a mentor that can look at this stuff and bring you clarity and focus. Because just like you said, Jono, when we have it, our stuff, and we think we know it and it's, you know, it's right here in our face. It's so uh, you, you can get so much clarity from someone else. You don't even see it, but to them, it's like a flashy neon sign. If you can find someone to help you and be a coach and a mentor, they're going to see that stuff and we can see it in others. And, you know, it's harder to see it in ourselves. So if you can bring someone outside to help, it, it's just going to help you uh, proceed and grow and scale so much faster. Yes. Agree. Well, 
that's the perfect transition to my next question there, Matt. There's a couple of questions I always ask all my guests to, to finish up with, and one of them revolves around mentors. So there's a few different ways I'm going to ask this question. It's basically a two-part question. Is there any mentors you've got at the moment, whether it be someone you're hired directly or someone you follow on social media, apart from the, the NFL player you've, you've already mentioned, <laughs> anyone there that, that you follow at the moment or you look up to that has really helped you or you recommend that anyone listening, watching this follow that can help them on their journey? Absolutely. Uh, that is an easy question for me to answer. It's Julie Stoian. And, oh, uh, yes. You know, laptop, Julie laptop lifestyle Facebook group. That's right. Yeah. Julie. Yes. So I, 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 uh, you know, I heard about click funnels. I'm like, yeah, I already know how to build stuff. I don't need click funnels. And then I got in, I'm like, all right, I'll do this one funnel away challenge. And then I got the book, the book camp PDF and Julie was the first on there. And I was like, wow, Julie is awesome. I want more Julie Russell's Russell's cool, all that stuff, but I want more Julie. So I joined you know, and now I'm in her digital insiders mastermind. She just blows my mind all the time. She's just such an awesome, genuine, good person that has got brains for days. And I love Julie. If, uh, if you're watching this on Facebook and you want to join the group, just comment Julie down below and I'll put a link to her Facebook group down there. I'm in that group. It's, I don't remember the exact name, but it's something like the laptop lifestyle there's about a million groups called that though. So make sure you, you, you comment below and I'll, I'll, um, I'll make sure I link the right one. If you're listening on the podcast, maybe just send me a DM on social media and I will um, link you to the group there. Uh, okay. And so that's great. Someone to follow a mentor there. The other way I like to ask it is in terms of books, Matt. Is there one book that you've read that has changed your entrepreneurial life or uh, that you recommend any of the listeners or watchers I should read? Or yeah, listen to these days. I, yeah, exactly right. Uh, I'm not like you, John. I just like to read. I like books. You know, um, I just made a simple goal for myself this year: read 52 books this year. Uh, I've never read that many in a year. And and, <laughs> but the one book that I've recently read that was such a mind shift for me that created in me just like this. It was like a light bulb. And at the at the time I was reading, I was like. I'm so naive that this sounds so awesome, but then there's a part of me that this I know is going to be hard, but this is just like, boom, like epiphany and it's called built to sell. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever heard of built to sell? I think I've got it. Who's it by? Uh, I think it's John Warillo, something like that. Oh, I've heard of it. I mustn't have bought it. Yeah, it is. You know, it's a short, uh, you know, you could, I read it on Sunday afternoon. It's written in a story format and I've had a, I had a business before this that I, that I sold uh, for 20 years, but this, it, even if you don't want to sell your business, it gives you the mindset of building a business like with purpose. Mm -hmm. And if you do want to sell it, it's going to be even that much more valuable but even if you don't want to sell it, it's going to help you build that business. That's actually a business, right? It's not a hobby. It's not something you do on the side. It's not a side hustle. This is a business that creates value for its audience and for potential investors or someone that wants to buy you out, but it's written so simple and bang it's trust me. You'll love it. Well, I, I've just put it on my shopping list then while you were talking. I went on Amazon.com, put it on my shopping list. I've got it here, Built to Sell by John Warrillow. And yes, I'm a huge fan of that because that's a shift that I've just made recently where I've always ran a business, but the business was just me owning a job, you know, and it's like, <laughs> um, it was just me working, me owning a super underpaid job, you know, me working 100 hours a week for, you know, for, for okay money. And I was right. like, nah, it's got to be a better way. Like, that's not a business, you know, a business, yeah. there's, there's certain things about it runs without you there, you know, it's got purpose right. and I'm sure all that's covered there. So I can't wait to get into that. Yeah. Um, all right. So Matthew, someone's listening to this, someone's watching this and they're like, you know what? This guy seems pretty cool. I want to at least uh, follow him on social media, maybe even hire him to do some of my stuff for me or, or with me. Where should we go? Should we add you on Facebook? Should we go to your website? What should we do? Yeah. You know, you can add me on Facebook. I love getting on Facebook and talking to people and just, and helping them out. You know, I jump on there. My whole thing with, with Facebook, honestly, I used to hate it. I, I don't even really go into the feed anymore, but you know, if you want to friend me on Facebook, 
go for it. And we, we can have a chat and just, you know, I'm not going to push you or sell you or anything. I just like to find out about what you're doing and, you know, if I can help you great. Uh, so there's that. And it's Matthew Barry, I believe uh, you, you'll, you'll search for me. You'll probably see me. I'm in, I'm in Jono's uh, group. And also you can find me on the, on the internet and embark E M B A R Q dot media. Awesome. Cool. So if you're listening on the podcast, I'll put both of those in the show notes, the website and Matthew's Facebook page. If you're watching it on the Facebook group, you can see his name come up there. I'll tag him. So just add him as a friend uh, and I'll put the link to the website down below. Matt, I think that's everything I wanted to cover for today. Is there anything I forgot? Is there anything I should have asked you but didn't? Or is there anything you want to finish this up with? No, I, I, this has just been great. Uh, John, it's, you know, like you're doing great things. It's great to connect with somebody that, you know, has got some vision and some excitement and, you know, really that's what this is. The fun about this kind of business and this kind of community is just connecting with people that are like-minded and, you know, really in the end, helping people and serving people is going to bring you a lot more joy than cash in your bank, in your, in, you know, in your, your bank account that certainly we need it. And that validates what you do, but serving people and helping people are really where you're going to find joy in life. Yes, agree. And I'll just give Matt a quick shout out again, I reckon, or as well, I recommend everyone add him to Facebook as a friend because that's how I stumbled across him. I was like, I mean, we're obviously in similar groups and that. And I'm like, man, this guy's just in all the same groups I am. His comments are really good. He's got a whole heap of mutual friends. You know what? I'm just going to add him and see what happens, you know? added him i'm like hey it's pretty cool you know sent a few dms i'm like oh, he's pretty cool I'll, I'll get him on this podcast and go from there so i recommend everyone friending him he's a cool guy but um hey matt thanks very much for your time i will um i will leave you to it uh if uh, we'll end the recording there so recording over and for those of you watching on facebook if you like the video just hit uh the like button any questions, comment them below and me and Matt will uh, we'll get them, we'll answer them through and just make sure to thank Matt for his time. Just comment below and just say, thank you, Matt. So that's it for me. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, John. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Hey, I'm going to end this, man, because um, that's how we end the live stream. <laughs>